Because of some of our congressmen who have a conscience, okay, the ones that have a conscience, that have a heart, that have some semblance of humanity, were so horrified what they saw or what they heard at this particular meeting that the information has now been leaked. And what information am I speaking of? Well, I'm going to share that with you. This is posted by In Glass. Okay? The secret meeting of Congress discusses imminent martial law. This is by B.A. Brooks. It's the United American Freedom Foundation. Um, when am I speaking? I'm speaking that a, uh, about a secret closed-door meeting that took place March 13th of this year of the United States House of Representatives in Washington. And I remember por reporting on this, folks. I couldn't tell you anything because there was nothing to tell. But it's interesting to note that in the history of the United States, that this secret closed-door meeting was only the fourth time in the history of this country that such a meeting was held by the House of Representatives. Even though representatives are sworn to secrecy by uh, House Rules Number 17, some of the members, probably very few, I might add, were so shocked, so horrified, so, so furious and concerned about the future of America by what was revealed to them inside the secret meeting. Well, folks, they have started to leak this secret information to independent news agencies around the world. The mass media said almost nothing, which is not a surprise, about the secret meeting of the House, mentioning only one of the items that was being discussed, the uh, new surveillance techniques that are going to be used by the U.S. government to uh, watch all of us, all American citizens. The story was first released in a newspaper out of Brisbane, Australia, curiously enough, revealing the contents of the uh, secret U.S. government meeting and plans for America, including all of its citizens. Yes, folks, us. Shortly thereafter, David J. Meyer from uh, the last Trumpet Ministries found it, and he made it more available for the world to see. Now, hold on to your seats, folks, because... This is what has been revealed about that meeting. Number one, the imminent, and I don't say possible here, I say the imminent collapse of the United States economy to occur sometime in late 2008. Now, for those of you who listen to Bob Chapman on Tuesdays, or you've talked to Robbie you Noel, know, or you've had any conversations, or listened intently to John Statmiller's show, or if you go into kitco.com or watch... Uh, um, um, not a secret to anybody. This has been going on for, for quite some time, but it's been escalating of late. And then, of course, we have the CDOs, we have the uh, the hedge funds, we have the, the Bear Stearns debacle, we have these members that are these, 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 these fall guys that are being arrested for it, similar to uh, the Enron scandal. And they're going to turn around and blame somebody for it. But the fact is that According to this meeting, the imminent collapse of the United States economy to occur sometime in late 2008. All the more reason why Ron Paul should be getting the nomination for the election, because it doesn't make any difference whether it's Obama or McCain. This is what's going to face them. But that being said, okay, the next one is the imminent collapse of the United States government finances sometime around mid-2009. Okay, so let's not, I mean, you know, we can rule out the infrastructure inside this country falling apart because the lapdog Congress, including the Democrats, continue to keep a lot of thing, more and more money for this occupation of Iraq, which is a waste of $2 billion a week at the expense of all of the programs that they have initiated throughout the history of this country, whether it be for schools or welfare or whatever it is, okay, or roads, or everything is going to waste. Everything is going to hell in a handbasket because of this occupation, this insane occupation. Next one, number three. The possibility of civil war inside the United States as a result of the collapse. Now, what are they talking about here? They're talking about rioting. Are they talking about food rioting? Well, 
We can put that on the list of possibilities, as I spoke with you just a few minutes ago about, you know, I, I wonder, as I looked at this receipt, as I spoke about earlier in the show, where they're sending a warning out right out of a mainstream multi-state grocery store talking about the, the food that they sold to us most likely or is contaminated with these specific dates on it and to give it back. And one of the things that went through my mind is what is the average ignorant American doing when they look at this? Do they have a clue what's going on here? And uh, my mind tells me probably not. Okay, but that was number three. The possibility of a civil war inside the United States as a result of the collapse. Now remember, folks, they are telling this to our congressional members. And there was a few, a very few of them, who were shocked, horrified, furious, and concerned enough, which means they had conscience enough to leak this story. But listen to number four. Number four, the advance, and I emphasize advance, roundups of insurgent U.S. citizens that are likely to move against the government. Now, what does that mean? likely to move against the government. How do they define move? Are they talking about taking up our arms? Hmm, I wonder. Are they talking about moving by by intellect, vocalizing our dissent towards their policies? What specifically are they talking about when they say likely to move? And then of course number five it goes on to say the detention of those rounded up at the uh, Rex 84 camps constructed throughout the United States. That's number five. Number six, the possibility of public retaliation against members of Congress uh, for the collapses. <sighs> well, now let me... Now this is, and I want to emphasize, if, if I were to move against the government for a collapse of our economy for public retaliation against members of Congress for the collapse. You know who? You know, and I, again, I want to emphasize it. You know who would be in my sights for something like that? If I were, I'm not, I'm not going to, folks. I want to clarify. But if I were, Nancy Pelosi would be right there on the top because I remember her campaigning for her, her position, her congressional seat back in the uh, early 2006, talking about George Bush. He needs to be impeached. We need to be stopped this Iraq war. And once she got elected, all that was off the table. And yet we've had the one, you know, uh, Congressman Dennis Kucinich, who's put forth these impeachment articles, both towards Cheney and Bush, and Nancy Pelosi has swept him under the rug. <laughs> can you say bought off and compromised? I can. Uh, let's see, that was number six, I believe. Okay. The location. Now they are they're telling our Congress critters about the location of safe facilities for members of Congress and their families to reside during this massive civil unrest. So they're giving them a place to go. They're telling them that there's going to be the possibility of public retaliation against members of Congress for the collapses, and they're giving them the location of safe facilities for members of Congress and their families to reside during this massive civil unrest. And of course, then they go on to tell them the necessary and unavoidable merger of the United States with Canada and Mexico establishing the uh, North American Union. See, so this is their this is their solution. Remember, po problem, reaction, solutions. Uh, uh, let's see, what is it? Let's see, it's uh, uh, thesis, antithesis, synthesis. And then, of course, they go on to say, and they notify Congress of the issuance of a new currency called the Amero for all three nations as an economic solution. And I'll go on. I'll even go farther than this and to say. You know, they, they can call it the Amero, Amero, they can call it the doo-doo, they can call it the cop cop they can call it whatever they want. But I'm going to go on to say that we're not going to be able to physically feel it, hold it, touch it, drive it down the road, hold it in our hands. We're not going to be able to put it in our, our uh, piggy banks or anything, folks. I believe that they will institute what they have been trying to do for a long time, which is indeed the cashless society. And if you don't want to play ball, they're just going to turn off your chip or they're going to uh, uh, put a little red flag against you in their computer system and you will not exist anymore. That's my prediction. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Okay. Now, going on, except for you guys, okay, a few hundred thousand U.S. patriots, most Americans have no clue 
what has really been going on within the United States for over the past 100 years. And the sad thing is that most do not want to know. They don't want to know the truth. Okay? How many of you out there have, have gone out and tried to tell somebody the truth and you get very passionate and, you're, and, you, and you get frustrated with these people because you see that glaze come over their eyes and then you want to turn around and talk about the latest touchdown in football or the latest grand slam in baseball or that slam dunk in basketball. But they don't want to deal with this. They don't want to know the truth. It's easier for them to live in denial. And that's why I say, and I call this twilight zone in many places, and I've, and, I've, and I've gone over this in my head, and I've thought about, okay, if I were now a dumbed-down American, and I'm out here being the awakened American now, trying to wake up a dumbed-down American, I'm welcoming, welcoming them to my nightmare of which I can never awake.